Good morning, good morning. Welcome to episode two of All Hands on Deck. It's Friday the 17th of February. It's about 8.30 in, this morning, in the morning. We're all completely knackered, so good luck with what you get today. <laughs> um, but great news. Uh, it's just uh, been shown. I saw Andrew Bridgen on Twitter this morning. Um, apparently all COVID jabs have been pulled. So let's take the win. It's a really good moment. How fantastic. Massive. We've got a lot of work to do, but it's a great starting point. So yeah. Anyway, today I am joined by my two lovely friends and colleagues, Amanda Dungate and Lisa Dunnington from PHA, um, both founding members and uh, have helped me pull my shit together. Uh, to get this moving forward and have done an outstanding job but we wanted to have a chat today um, about the importance of us all getting involved the importance of focusing on community um, we know local action has a national impact um, and with PHA and PFFA and other fantastic initiatives across the UK that are off the ground now um, it's important that we remind ourselves why we do this why it's important that the power does return back to the communities does return back to the people um so yeah welcome ladies are you awake or still pretty half asleep I'm, Just, well. yeah. I'm good i'm good i'm fired up i'm actually fired up by the news that they've dropped the booster yeah I mean, I, they've that's just knocked it onto tiredness. the government website with no announcement but you know that's our job isn't it it's it's this is a perfect example this is our the grassroots movements need to get this information out there and um start sharing and getting involved with um other things that we can now go after important things that i guess we're going to talk about you know things like digital id um who pandemic treaty uh 5g all those uh things that we need 15 to start. minute city things 15 minute cities so get ourselves coordinated help people realize how they can get involved to stop this and you know they're not difficult things we i think we put together a checklist for people and stick it in the um description of this podcast when it goes out but there's a lot we can do as individuals, you know, and the yeah. old, um, as so many people say to me, when when I talk about some of these issues um, that we need to start, you know, a coordinated fight back on, they say, but I'm just one person, what can I do? It doesn't make any difference if I do that. Well, that's the point, isn't it? As, a, as one person, yes, you are just one person, but if we all do the same thing together, we're a huge voice and we're, and we're saying no. So well, that's the thing with the MP challenge. It is about everyone absolutely. getting in front of their MP face to face, asking the difficult questions, showing the strong evidence, you know, demanding action yeah. is taken by their MP and enough people do it. That MP is going to feel the pressure. They're going to start to crack. And that's exactly yeah. where they need to be right now. They've had the opportunity to play this nicely. They've chosen not to clearly, apart from the likes of Andrew Bridger and Christopher Chope and so forth. But the vast majority, they know they must know. And they've done nothing and it's time to hold their damn feet to the fire and make them very very uncomfortable and if all of us did that if all of us made the effort to do that it's going to have far more impact than just one of us Absolutely. showing up and doing it you know you go back to the poll tax way back when you know yeah. when everybody came together and said no not happening it didn't happen you know um and by the way <laughs> If they don't know by now, bloody hell, they shouldn't be in there. No. You know. They need to get out. I'm still going on at Reese Mark. I've got another email. I sent well, I sent two emails to him yesterday. And I've got another one today. I'm like a dog with a bone. Yes, I'm an irritant. I couldn't care less. You're yeah. my MP. I haven't heard from you in over a week. Well, nearly two weeks now. Even though I've sent masses of information. And um, yeah, it's not on. So I'm going to be coming at you. I'm going to be coming at you. And I am not going to stop until yeah. you start responding. Yeah. And What's I that? think also you need to remember, we've got loads of resources that people can take with them. So it's not like you have to go in alone. You know, I think there can be this feeling of it's a bit daunting. People don't like confrontation. Go with somebody else in your local area yeah. if you don't want to, you know, buddy up with somebody. But there's so many resources now that we can share. And I think it'd be great, actually, if we put some of the notes in the description, like the summary of all of the uh, jab injuries that we can take now. There's so much evidence out there. Yeah. Um, and it's making making them aware, making these MPs aware if they're not aware, which, you know, it's highly unlikely that they haven't come across 
this information, but we would do need to hold them to account. And I think the more that we do that, the more we will see at ground level, at grassroots level, the impact that we are having collectively if we come together. Yeah, That's yeah. the most important part of this, coming together. And we've got some great partners, obviously, that we we work with, Stand in the Park. Um, I had a great um, call with uh, Anna at the Children's Health Defence yesterday. And, you know, I think sometimes people think Children's Health Defence is just about children. It's not. It's about everything that ultimately affects our children and future generations. Yeah. So, you know, tomorrow for in Oxford, Anna will be there filming, um, you know, against the 15 minute cities so we've got some wonderful partners we will coordinate with them we will get these messages out and we will get everybody doing the same thing yeah it's all about collaboration and multi-pronged attacks you know uh, everyone can find something that they're interested in something yeah, that right. resonates that they want to fight against fight for whatever that might be there are so many things people can get involved with so this tomorrow this weekend we're doing a soft launch for the um, Vote Freedom Project. Uh, for those that aren't aware of what that is, this is an opportunity for a support mechanism to be in place to support independent candidates standing up, um, be it for local by-elections, be it for, you know, more regional-based things or national um, general election. You know, that's coming in 2024. We want to be geared up. Now, I don't know about anyone else, but for me personally, party politics is done. It's too much of an opportunity for a level of influence, having the whip there, do, you know, forcing MPs into position that might not suit their constituents. Actually, if you're an independent MP, the only person you're people you're accountable to are your constituents. And that is surely the way it should be. And the Vote Freedom Project are there to support in the way that a political party would with the bureaucracy, the paperwork, the, you know, campaigning and so forth. But without having to have that allegiance to a political party, there's just eight principles, very basic things like freedom of speech that we ask candidates to or potential candidates to abide by. And we'll throw our weight behind you. We'll help hold your hand through that process. We'll help get you through it um, on that side of things. But we would love to see 650 freedom loving MPs win the next general election. And then you yeah. start the decentralization process. You get those um, independent inquiries moving forward. We start then holding people to account that need to be held to account as well as helping the new be built the new be pushed forward um and elevated into a position where it should be which is for the communities to make the decisions on what they need um so yeah that's coming tomorrow there's so many different things happening out there that people can get yeah. involved with there's no excuse there's no yeah. excuse um yeah. it's it's a war. you know what and some have some have a tight deadline so yeah you know, we, we we do really need to pull our finger out on the digital ID. Yeah. Um, well, it's like the WHO pandemic treaty, isn't it? That one's coming in in March by the looks of it. And, you know, we needs knocking to, out the park. Absolutely. Digital ID, we've got till the 1st of March. Yeah. WHO pandemic treaty, like you say, is March as well. So um, I think that checklist for people, what can I do? OK, I can click on that link. I can have my voice heard in terms of digital ID. And we can even share a response, a template response to make it as easy as possible. But it's important that your voice is heard in terms of these things. Yeah. And coming together. I think that's the key message, particularly with what we do, you know, PHA, yeah. PFFA. It's all about bringing people together and starting to build what you want to see in your communities, because we've been so isolated from each other and not enough people are working together not enough groups are working together and it's time that everyone dropped the egos now this isn't oh, about yeah. you know I'm, I'm doing I'm doing this you're doing that this is about what can we do together yeah and I think that's why PHA have done so well we're not interested in um you know <clears throat> the medals so to speak of what everyone's doing it's just we're all just getting on with it and the hubs we don't own anything quickly. No, we, we share it all freely. Really. It's really open source. Crazy. It's the only way it can be open source for everybody, yeah. for the people, yeah. by the people. And that's why it's growing so quickly. And I think if other groups started to adopt that approach and stop trying to hold on to it, everything for themselves, yeah. this would have been over a long time ago. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. For those that don't know what PHA is, it's the People's Health Alliance. It's a um, organic people-led movement uh, which supports 
um, independent community groups setting up their own health hubs, um, ideally with an integrated approach of kind of an allopathic and holistic approach where possible, um, and very much there as a safety net to help those who can't access the NHS, don't want to access the NHS, or aren't getting the results from the GPs that they want, and want to take a more natural approach to their well-being. Um, but each community creates the health hub it needs in its own image. We've just got some little um, kind of guidelines we want people to abide by, but really otherwise it is over to the communities to create what they need. And we help with templates and resources and connections and so forth, um, and hopefully longer term funding. Um, but yeah, that's what PHA is about and a bit very basic level. Moo, tell us where we're at with PHA at the moment. Just give people a little update as to what's happening. Yeah, I mean, we've got some incredible things going on at grassroots level. Uh, the hubs, we've got probably about 25, 30 possibly now that are actively out there in the community doing something. I'm going to an event tomorrow, my local hub um, that are putting on, and we've got another guy from Taunton, one of the hub coordinators there who's coming along to that. So what this, what PHA is also about, and I think it's important to understand, is that we can have these well, well-being clinics, these wellness clinics, they're set up all over the UK and they're doing some great work but we're about bringing the groups together bringing people together so what we do is create this strong network and whilst they remain independent and they're doing and they're serving their community they're actually all coming together to discuss how to move things forward share ideas share success stories share challenges as well so that we can all help people build as quickly as possible you know if one's doing an incredible job over here we want to be able to share what they're doing we've got templates being shared by hubs to get bank accounts and their structures set up and so it's really that network that is making this stronger and we have a weekly hub call um, and what I'm noticing more is the ones that are coming along consistently are the ones that are doing really really well because they're fully embracing that unity and coming together collaboration yeah yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely so, I mean, they're doing some fantastic things out there we've got fundraising events going on we've got hubs in physical spaces now we've got virtually so it doesn't have to be a physical space as well I have to make that really clear you could have a virtual connected network of practitioners that are working independently but they all know how to refer who to refer and can come together for local events in their community yeah absolutely brilliant lisa Amazing. is there an update on where we're at a quick one on the internationals because obviously yes. we've got a so couple of countries flying haven't we it's not just happening here, it's happening, uh, you know, at the last count, we've got 31 countries that are interested in in rolling out our blueprint. And um, Australia, New Zealand are absolutely flying, they're opening hubs, um, they are, you know, they're, they're growing their partners and affiliates, they're, they've got new ambassadors coming on board, and, you know, they're, and they're really working flying. closely together, aren't they, Australia and New Zealand, they're in they contact are. regularly, and yeah. they are, which is fantastic, and makes a lot of sense, because both countries um, have Maori law that, that can help them in terms of the, the, the natural law um, processes um Canada USA they we've got strong groups there finding their feet and um Canada's pretty close now to getting their first hubs open and uh, it's just amazing Portugal flying by the seats that seat of the pants they're doing brilliantly we've got a wonderful um, ambassador for Portugal Sarah Che she's doing a lot of work really reaching out to people around the world and talking about PHA so the, the amazing thing about the international is it really just exploded out of an interview you did, Catherine, in June last year with Anne Gregory, one of our, our, our greatest ambassadors. And, you know, the, the comments that were coming back, I mean, we got, we got hundreds of emails. I was actually on holiday in Turkey, if you remember, and I spent most of yeah. it on my laptop answering <laughs> emails from all over the world. And it was so exciting. And they're still coming to this day as people catch up on videos and uh, interviews. But the comments were all the same. Oh my gosh, I've had this vision for the last 20, 30 years and you've, you've, you've started doing it, you know, and I'm just beside myself. And it, it, there were so many like that. So this isn't something new that we're doing, you know? It's very simple. It's a really simple idea of empowering people to take back control of their health. Um, and giving them the resources and the tools to do that and you know people want this they need it 
they're desperate for it. And so everybody's getting behind it. Um, the train has left the station in terms of the health re the revolution. This is it. Get on board, yeah. people, because it's, you know, it's a beautiful thing. And it's just it's just growing by the day. It's also another way of us uh, regaining independence in terms of the control mechanisms that the governments currently have, because the NHS is a very, very controlled mechanism. And whilst I'm not here to dig at the NHS and uh, go through that argument, don't get me wrong, they've done incredible things over the years. They've saved my life twice. You know, I'm not going to sit here and, and slash them, although we're very aware of what's gone on over the last three few years. It's still a control mechanism that can be weaponized as we've seen against the people, the yeah. joy of doing it at PHA and the independence of those hubs means no one can mechanize that for anything. It can't be used as a weapon in any way because it's independent. The government have zero control or say over it. And so what we're doing as well throughout PHA and PFFA um, is creating safety nets or outside of the control mechanisms that are currently in place. So for PFFA, it's very much about getting the power back to the farmers to deal directly with the community, taking out all of the middlemen where possible so that there's less control. The government can't control it. DEFRA cannot control it. They're going to have a bloody good try. We know yeah. that. But we, the people, know enough now. We're ready to fight back and say, no, you ain't touching our livestock. No, you're not doing that. And start becoming more self-sufficient in our own food production because it is about removing them from the situation. It's about decentralising those power structures and returning the power back to the people. Um, don't get me wrong. We need to um, remove the old systems. Um, but there's a lot of power that goes into building the new. And we, we have that power. We, we're remaining lawful. Get on yeah. with it. Yeah. Definitely. But keeping our eye on the old, because, you know, yeah. it's things like, you know, it's the WHO that really are a huge Absolutely. worry in terms of this, because they want to outlaw holistic practices or control them. And, you know, um, we've got it. That's why we've got to be so mindful and look at this pandemic treaty, for example, and all be behind it together, resisting. Yeah. And I think, it, I think you're right. It's about having an awareness of what's going on but not, not, you know, well, really yeah. giving too much energy yeah. to attention to it, because I think that's another thing. We're being bombarded so much with all this fear mongering, yeah. if you like, and it's coming from our, you know, it's coming very much from those that can see what's going on as much as it is from those that are trying yeah. to control what's going on. So it's really being able to, it's always for me being about, you know, knowing the truth, knowing what's going on, but still focusing your energies on building the new and the positive and how we can all navigate around these things together, because there will always be ways around it. You know, we are the, the brilliant thing about what we're doing is it's the critical thinkers that have the ability to think outside of the box. Yeah, we don't think like they do. We think yeah. we can think of we're solution finders. Um, yeah. We will always find a way around this, but we do need to do it together. That is yeah. the biggest part of this. Yeah. If we're all trying to go off doing our own thing separately it just doesn't work it's coordinated it everything yeah. there's power no, in numbers there's power in numbers and we oh, all so need many to remember more of us. That. yeah you imagine yeah. everyone who's awake and aware all through their energy in the same direction definitely that issue's game over very quickly yeah yeah definitely so imagine if they said tomorrow we're having another lockdown and we all just said Everybody that's awake said, mm, not happening, I'll see you. Off we go. It, it would stop it tomorrow. It would do. I'm confident, that confident now in our numbers and our united strength. You know, And people are very aware now of what happens if we don't. You know, there, there's no question mark about where this goes if we don't stand up. Yeah. And I think people now more than ever before are ready to say, nah, not yeah. happening not happening ladies you know and what I think we'll see happen over the coming months is I think we'll see more groups start to come together I think we'll see more co coordinated efforts more strategic efforts to cover the basis of the key areas that are of concern like the WHO pandemic treaty the 15 minute cities any future pandemic lockdowns various things that could take place we're going to start to see a more coordinated effort within the movement um, to bring this shit show to an end, to, to mm -hmm. say no, to stop it in its tracks. You know, mm -hmm. that is coming. I feel really positive this year. It's going to feel dark and there's going to be some difficult times and we're going to have hurdles to jump over. But I still feel very, very positive that by the end of this year, 
there's going to be a lot more people awake and aware of what's going on. And we're all going to start uniting in a far stronger way than we ever have before. And at that point, it's game over for the bad guys. It's totally I'm, game I'm over. Really Once we all come together, <laughs> yeah. it's done. I'm really giddy today. And I think it's because of that announcement about the boosters, or rather yeah. not that whisper that went on the way. Yeah. <laughs> that that went quiet fart that radar. slipped out overnight, yeah. <laughs> bloody hell I said we wouldn't swear sorry but <laughs> that's a huge huge win I mean it's yeah. massive is it interesting though that Bill Gates was in the UK yesterday meeting with you know the morons yeah. and overnight they pull this one now I wonder whether he came over and he's going backtrack 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 shit they know too much they know too much back away back away we'll come in from another angle don't know obviously not remotely clear what happened but it's very interesting that he flies in and then last night the the boosters are all booked to an end yeah i think they're panicking i definitely think they're in panic mode oh they will and when they're panics like you say they're panics they're they're feeling cornered they're gonna throw as much as they can oh they're yeah they're gonna show their cards and this is the yeah. thing for years and years and years, all of this has gone under the radar. People didn't know because that's how much power they had. They're actually losing their power, but it looks they want people to see that they have the power. Therefore, they're having to throw it and show everybody. Their hands. Yeah, they don't. They're they, losing it and they know they're losing they it. Fucked up. They fucked up bigly. And now there's two million of us awake. They can't win this. What yeah. it comes down to is how much of a fight are they going to put up? That's what we're up against. How much damage are they going to do while they're fighting? Yeah. They're going to try something big. Don't be surprised if they try and pull some big stuff because it's panic mode. And they've thrown, like you say, they've thrown all their, showing all their cards far quicker than they wanted. You know, they originally wanted lockdowns to be something like five to seven years before even introducing a jab. I mean, can you imagine how broken the people of this country would have been if they'd got away with shutting us down for five to seven years. Can you even begin to think what that would have looked like, particularly on our young people? It would have been horrific. Yeah. But they didn't. I mean, I mean what they already did was bad enough and the repercussions now that we're living with. Um, yeah. You know. But imagine with five to seven years. That would have been just horrific. And they fucked it because that's not happened. We're awake. There's so many of us that aren't jabbed up and as a result have seen through the nonsense yeah. and they, they're scared they're very but they're very also scared. they've woken people up to other vaccines now I haven't vaccinated my yeah. kids in well probably about 10 years is the last time my eldest had hers um but there's so many more not trusting yeah. in any yeah. of them now and I don't yeah. think they foresaw that coming which is huge for, for big pharma particularly who has huge amounts of power you know, and don't forget the actions that are now being that are taking place around the world against big pharma. You know, you've yeah. got Thailand, you've got Switzerland, you've got Japan saying not happening, and actually oh, the civil lawsuits that are going to be I mean, coming out of this. Lot, there's a lot of oh, great stuff profound, happening. profound. But yeah. what we have to bear in mind, and one of the reasons PHA is so important, is as people wake up for whatever period i believe there's gonna be a lot of distrust in the nhs i think people are going to want to move away from the nhs they're going to stop and think before they start just taking any drugs that the gp signs over to them you know this pill for every ill that dave cartman talks about is kind of the mentality within the gp network now um yeah. that's all going to come to an end and it's very important that people feel the safety net of pha that they understand there are things being put in place and these are being done by very genuine caring wonderful healers um that are within every community that people might not even be aware of. It's so important that we have those safety nets in place. So as people wake up and become aware, they're not being missed. They are able to access some sort of healthcare support. Yeah. Um, and the, the trust within the NHS and the more allopathic approach to healthcare is going to take a knock. Yeah. It's already happening, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think we're very conscious of that, aren't we? And that's exactly why we're putting these safety nets in place. Yeah. You know, mental yeah. health, the food. huge issue um it's going to get bigger as more people wake up um so we're there to capture some of the uh, capture these people as they fall yeah absolutely and pha has always been about that um with pffa um this year i'd love to think this spring summer we're gonna have a lot more people trying to grow their own food we're gonna have a lot more community groups i mean that that side of pffa is flying sammy who's taken the lead on that she's one of our lovely ladies she's incredible um she's flying with that 
you know, we've got so much interest now from community growing groups and people wanting to establish community growing groups, people looking for allotment spots, going to the council, finding empty spaces. They can harass the council about handing over, growing food for their community, growing it in your garden, on your windowsill. It doesn't matter. Grow yeah. food, become as self-sufficient as you possibly can because you're taking away their power. Every time you grow something new, you're chipping away at their power structure. So people might not understand the enormity of doing that. But what we want to see is really self-sufficient communities in the long run, um, generating their own food uh, source. And then farmers working on a regional basis in terms of cereals and other crops that, that need to be grown. So that that power structure, again, it, the decision making, the, 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 the access all comes back to that community level. And as each time you do that, the supermarkets take a hit. The big conglomerates take a hit, the chemical companies take a hit, the big feed companies take a hit. And these are the power structures that control our food production across the world. Take them out, take them out. Yeah. yeah. The minute people don't buy from them, sense. they're done. You know, it's, it, the, the control of the commodities across the world is a massive power structure. And actually, if we're prepared to make a few sacrifices, like not having strawberries on Christmas Day and so forth, we take away they, that power they taste structure anyway when they're out of season. Yeah, out of it season, it's crap anyway. Did. Yeah, horrible. It's not the same nutritional value. None of that yeah. stuff. But this will We've also change our thinking. to the health, won't it? As well, this is about yeah. you know, health. It's all linked, you know. With and that's our role so as well. Much. Yeah, to educate and think about the environment. You know, I'm not a green agenda person, but I do think there's a lot we could be doing to support our environment, our wildlife, our, our, our you know, pollinators and um, how we farm, yeah. how we use animals in farming. There's a far nicer, better way to work. And all of this through PFFA and other groups out there, you know, pharmacy, Co there's loads of other groups out there doing fantastic things. We take away the power structures and we make food healthy again, <laughs> you yeah. know, and um, focus in on that. But just to sort of come towards the end, I want to focus in on what you ladies think about how you see imp the importance of people just taking even half an hour a day, every day or five days a week to do something to support in their community, something that they can do. Why is it so fucking important right now that this happens? Over to you, Moo. Uh, well, I... <sighs> I think we pretty we pretty much discussed why it's so important. We want to decentralize. We want to build up these communities so that they have the control. They have the power to do what they feel is right for their local community. I think it's also important for mental health um, that people can come together because we are meant to be connected. You know, we've we've all been driven apart for so many years. We're meant to be working together. Um, I can't tell you, you know, whilst the last three years have been utterly bonkers, I have learnt so much more than I would ever have dreamt. I've learned about my rights. I've learned about, you know, real nutrition. I mean, I'm starting to learn about food and farming, which for me is quite massive because I can't even grow a potato. Um, <laughs> so I think it's, it's changing the mindsets. That's what this is about. And it's also feeling like even if you haven't got much money, you can contribute, you can volunteer some time to your local, say the pharmacy, for instance, you just talked about that you could become a driver, deliver food boxes, you could get good nutritious food in return for that, you know, and doing something for other people makes you feel good. Yes, just massive huge part of this. So I think there are so many reasons to do this. But that for me is the biggest. Yeah, absolutely. Lisa, have you got any additional thoughts? Are you much the same as Moe? My only thought in addition is really it's about freedom and you choose to give up your power or you choose to keep hold of it. And for me, from the start of this shit show, I never, ever considered giving up my power. So for me, that's what drives me every day, the fight. And it's for my children. Yeah. It's for my children and my hopefully one day grandchildren, you know, and their children. It's always been about the kids. Um, and when they came after the kids, they woke up the beast. So, uh, you know, it, it's the freedom. It's the freedom of choice. It's the freedom to do what you want to do. And if we all just get behind each other and do it together, there's nothing really that can break us. You know, they can have a bloody good try. but. And to, at the point we say no, it's game over. Yeah, non-compliance. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. All the way. 
No, this is the way forward, ladies. Um, as you guys out there might or might not know, uh, All Hands on Deck is very much a platform for hearing about what's happening within your community, what's going on, what have you established, what have you learned, what do you need, how do people get involved, what are your contact details, and giving a platform to those groups that don't currently have it but are doing outstanding work already well established within their communities. It might be new groups who want to get established and all hands on deck will give a platform to these as well as having discussions about what's going on within the movement, what's going on within the country and what's going on within the world. Um, there's a lot happening. What is very beautiful is this isn't just UK either. We are, whilst we're not globalists remotely, we absolutely understand the benefit of working internationally with our brothers and sisters across the world who are all looking to work in the same direction, st sharing stories, sharing resources, sharing knowledge and ideas, supporting each other. Um, is there's an emergency in that country? Who have we got? What can we give to you to make it easier for you? So whilst we're very much focused on the UK here because that's where we live, we absolutely understand the importance of groups across the world connecting, coordinating, strategizing and supporting each other, sharing resources, sharing knowledge um, and taking away the power structures as we do it. Um, so I'm happy to work and talk with um, people from across the world who are working with their community, creating new initiatives and ways forward um, and having you on all hands on deck so that we can inspire each other, motivate each other and learn from each other. This is what it's about is collaboration, coordination and coming together this year is going to be insane it's going to be incredible uh there's going to be a lot of heavy stuff what will feel like heavy stuff um but they fucked up it's too late we're winning we do win this it's now just down to how much of a fight are they going to put up um yeah. before we can slap them down and put them in prison so um yeah ladies thank you so much for joining me this morning absolute delight i know it's stupidly early o'clock but let's face it We've all managed to get out of our dressing gowns, so it's a result. Um, but guys, this will be going live soon. And uh, please keep your eyes out for episode number three, which will be coming soon. Thank you.